And we're live. Hey, everyone. I'm Maria Sansone. Welcome to another edition of Mom to Mom. I am live here in the mom cave, high above the house in the attic. I am so, so, so pumped for today's episode. My guest today has been a friend in my head for some time. I've been doing um, some low-key and some not-so-low-key stalking of her Instagram for years. Her name is Juggling the Jenkins. Well, actually, her name is Tiffany Jenkins, and you may recognize her from Instagram. She is a mom of three, ages four through nine. She's an author, a speaker, a comedian, and a recovering drug addict. She has got a hell of a story to tell us today. And what I love about her so much, and we talk about this on mom to mom we love people who keep it real. I'm not sure anyone keeps it real quite like Tiffany. Take a look. Mommy wants it! Cool. Mommy, can you push me? I, nope, I'm not moving my legs. I love you so much, though. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? It's a stencil, so you like literally can't mess it up unless you go on your forehead like I did, because <laughs> I'm stupid. Listen, maybe it's because I have really low standards for my eyebrows, but like, I think that's great. Mommy! What? While you were out buying bread during the pandemic, Tiffany was shaving her eyebrows and experimenting, <laughs> building an empire. And I love her for that. So please ask your questions. I've got a whole bunch for her. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet Tiffany Jenkins. Woo! Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Live from your me. closet. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to my closet. Well, well, welcome to Mom to Mom. We're huge fans. I'm like sweaty, excited to meet oh you. Gosh, thank you. I'm not. I'm not that great. I promise. Everybody gets so excited, but I'm like, listen, we got to lower this bar because I'm just a normal person in my closet. <laughs> Isn't it funny that what's really propelled you and made you super famous on Instagram? You have over a million followers. How many? Like four million followers? Millions on Facebook. I have. 4.5, but who's counting? <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> um, but what's made you super famous is the fact that you're so super real and embracing the awkwardness and embracing the weirdo inside of you. Isn't that crazy that that's what gets you there? It's a gift. <laughs> um, it really is. I, I spent my entire childhood trying not to be as weird as I was. And if I would have known I would grow up and like it would become my career, I would have just started embracing it a long time ago. Right? You got to tell the little girls out there that, that just do the opposite of what you're thinking. Yes. Truly. I, I was. I, I was such a weirdo. And I everybody always made fun of me all the time. And it's like, huh, who's the weirdo now? Who's the, the weirdo now? Show. I mean, you're really, truly building a business from what you're doing on Instagram. Is that right? Yeah, but I don't know how like to do it a business. That was that was not part of my plan. So every, you know, I get these emails that are like, we would love to do this huge deal with you. Just sign here. And I'm like to my husband, I'm like, can you read this and tell me if this looks good? I don't know what's happening. So. Wait, have you not lawyered up yet and have an agent and a manager and the whole thing? No, no not at all. <laughs> I don't have any of it. Wow. All right. We need to talk offline. We got to get you set up because you are obviously on your way. You, you're you huge online. Your skits are hysterical. Um, but let's like go back in time a little bit here. How did we, how did this start? How did you, like, what is day one, episode one look like on Instagram for you when you decided to just kind of bear all? Um, so to be a hundred percent honest, I didn't even have an Instagram in the beginning because I was, I thought it was for like bikini models and stuff. And clearly that's not me. So I started on Facebook and I, after I had my kids, I felt like I was failing. And so I would go on Facebook to see what other people were doing and everybody looked really great. Like they had their life together. And I decided like the world needs something real. So I'm just going to put my real stuff out there and I made a video, like my hair wasn't brushed. I didn't have makeup on. And people were like, thanks, man, for showing your true self. It makes me feel better about who I am. And so then I was like, let's do it. And the more honest I was about the things that I had always tried to hide, 
the more people gravitated towards me. And that's when I realized, okay, there's no shame in this anymore. People need this. And it evolved from there in what seemed like overnight for me, honestly. So many of your videos to me seem viral. I'll get past them several times from different girlfriends in different groups. But is there one that you would say was kind of the tipping point in the beginning for your career? Yes. The I made a group about, I mean, I made a video about mom groups and I played different characters that you would find in an online Facebook group in real life. And I was kind of poking fun at the way things went in there. Um, and it, of course it got shared to all these mom groups because it was so relatable. And in each mom group, there's thousands of people who then went to my page and started following me. So I think that's really what started it. And then I shared a story about my addiction and that was the tipping point. People were like, not only, you know, is she real and looks like she's having fun, but she has this dark past and somehow has made it past that. And that's when you really double down on the realness. It's not just yeah. real about, you know, being a mom and doing all this stuff. You talk about your addiction and there is some really dark stuff. So tell us a little bit about your, your history with that. Yes, I was addicted to drugs for about 10 years and it started off slow enough. Like we were just doing it for fun on the weekends, me and my friend. Um, and I didn't know the truth about addiction. I didn't know about withdrawal. I didn't know that I would ever be a candidate to be an addict until for me, it was too late. And um, I was, I didn't have my pills one day and I felt really sick. And so I realized that in order to not be sick, I had to keep doing them. And with that level of desperation of not feeling sick came a whole new level of um, sadness and despair and loneliness. And it was like a vicious cycle and it got worse and worse every day. Wow. So drug of choice for you was? Opiates. Wow. And a lot of people get started on pain pills for legitimate reasons, like sports injuries, things like that. Um, I had no excuse. I was just, like I said, I grew up feeling weird and out of place. And I was looking to not feel anything, not feel insecure, not feel anxious or weird. And as soon as I did the pill, I, I felt numb for the first time. And I loved that feeling of not having to worry and just existing. And I took it too far. And it ended pretty badly. Yeah, to put it mildly. <laughs> um, I thought that getting into a relationship with the deputy sheriff would be really good for me. I, I grew up in a household with a police officer and he provided a lot of structure for us. So I thought, oh, okay, this will be the ideal person who can get me back on track. But I was so good at manipulating that I just ended up hiding my addiction from him for years. And I was stealing and breaking the law, like right under the same roof as him. And then I was arrested. And that was when everything changed. And you spent time in jail? I did. I spent 120 days in jail. And it, in the beginning, it was so hard that I, I, I felt like I had to end my life. Like I, I couldn't continue um, living in this broken body with this broken brain. It was too hard. And if it was up to me, I wouldn't be here. But um, they ended up saving me. And as time went on and the drugs started to clear my head, I started to feel emotions again that I had numbed for the past 10 years and um, excitement for life. As weird as that sounds, because it's so in being in jail really is what saved you. That combined with, I think that it was like this amazing series of events that happened. I was in jail, the I was forced to be off of the drugs, and then my father came to visit me in jail. And he told me that he himself had gotten sober and he had faith in me and he loved me no matter what, and he would always be there for me. And up until that day, I thought everybody hated me and nobody would ever want to give me a second chance. So having someone love you when you're at your lowest, it made me realize if he can love me, why can't I love myself? And I was really excited to get out of jail and start going to recovery meetings with my father. And so that really inspired me as well. Wow. This is incredible. And it's so you're so honest and open about that. And I think that's what people love about you so much, because there are so many people out there struggling, maybe not with opioids at the moment, but in some other way in their life. And you've really helped them through. So how do you take what you've learned in the past and, and bring that to momming in current day right now? Well, it helps having gone through that because I, even in the craziest moments with my kids, like where my fuse is here and one more 
question about a snack will send me over the edge. Yeah. I remind myself that there was a time where I was in a jail cell and I felt lost and I felt hopeless. And that, um, it, that helps me to be grateful in these little moments. Unbelievable. So is there ever a time where you're like, I've gone too far. I shared too much. The genie's out of the bottle now. And I can't, I cannot get that back. Yes. Well, every day, <laughs> every day. I feel that because I have this thing where like I verbally process my thoughts and I do that on lives and then I have to backtrack and people like giving people an inside view in my brain can be scary sometimes <laughs> because I'm not even sure what's in there. There hasn't been any subject really that I regret putting out there other than the time I made a video comparing moms to dog moms. And I, I did this skit where like I put my daughter in a cage and was like, okay, mommy's going to the <laughs> store. I'll see you in a little bit. Like to try to prove that it wasn't the same. And the dog moms came for my soul. And I learned my lesson. You don't ever mess with the dog mom because they do not play when it comes to their dogs. Amazing. Was, yeah. I was on I mean, the Yahoo homepage. That's the thing with, with putting yourself out there in on any platform in any capacity, there's going to be some hate or a lot of hate. And so you, especially as a comedian, you try to push, you push, you push, and, and you're not sure what's going to be like a little bit too far. So that's not too bad. That's not too yeah. bad. Well, I, I'm walking on eggshells constantly. I'm always afraid. Uh-oh. You froze for me. Like, treading very oh, carefully. Are. I'm sorry. Is it me? Is it because I'm in my closet? <laughs> no, no. It's it's because we're in a pandemic and we're trying to do a live show from um, our attics and basements and old shoes and closets. <laughs> so don't worry. Okay. We need a code word for when I should stop talking. Pineapple. I know, but maybe that was only for me. Um, but let's talk about judgment a little bit. You talked about getting, um, you know, people coming at you for doing certain videos and things like that. How do you handle the judgment that you do get? And so many of us moms get in real life and online. And especially, you know, being that you're a recovering addict, you're in a delicate place, yeah. I'd say. I I don't handle judgment well. Um, I'm just a super sensitive person in general. And so I take everything really personally and I wish I didn't, but I'm working on it in therapy. But I, I feel like I can't relate to going to someone else and trying to make them feel bad or hurt their feelings. And so I can't fathom why somebody would want to do that to me. But I understand that hurt people hurt people and that sometimes people in their lives are unhappy. And so they try to. Uh -oh. More fragile. Can you hear me? I can now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't read the comments because it's, I'm feeling extra fragile and other times I feel the need to hop in there and defend myself, but it's, it's a I'm learning as I go. I think developing stick thicker skin is the answer here. And so I'm working on it. Have you dealt with some mom shaming? In your life? Yes. Yeah. A lot. A lot. Um, especially because like now uh, I, I made the decision and I haven't really said this online because I didn't want to hear it, but I sent my son to kindergarten. He was starting kindergarten and I felt about other, can you hear me? I can now. You said I felt. So start again with I felt. <laughs> okay. I felt like people would think that I didn't care about other people's health or take it the virus seriously and things like that. But for me, I had to make a choice because in order to continue providing for my family, I have to work and I can't work with three little kids running around me. And so that was a decision that I made. And it was terrifying because again, online, everywhere you go, everybody has different ideas of what's right. You know, yeah. there was a so lot tough. of, a lot of moms, and we talked about this a lot on the show uh, as school was starting, just where I live in my small town, there was so many moms turning on each other about the, do we send our kid back to school or don't we? And I just wanted to remind everyone, dude, we're all, we all have the same goal in mind here. We just want our kids to be happy, healthy, and safe. So chill out, 
please. And then when you're in the public eye, it's, it's tough, you know, when you, when you make those decisions, I remember even things like breastfeeding, I, I posted a, a picture very early on feeding my six week old, a bottle and they came after me because I wasn't breastfeeding. Come on. I don't think so. So I've gone on the, you know, gone out publicly the other way and said, just feed your kid, whether it's breast, a bottle, whatever, you do what you got to do. Um, but the mom shaming thing is tough, especially if you are sensitive. And um, I think people would be surprised to hear that because you're so funny and your videos are, you know, you're all out there. Um, Thank you. I, I think that a lot of my humor comes from insecurity and feeling uncomfortable and feeling a deep sadness sometimes that I can't explain or control. I, I've developed humor as a defense mechanism a bit. And the whole shaming thing with moms, like you said, the truth of the matter is nobody knows what we're doing. And you can pretend like you do, but you don't. And every single child is different. And so there's no way Sally in Oklahoma knows what my kid needs to eat for dinner because she hasn't been in my house all week. She doesn't know what's going on. So I take that kind of stuff uh, with a grain of salt when it comes to parenting. I don't get as offended when people judge my parenting as I do when they judge other stuff about me. Do you, do your kids think you're funny? So, sometimes, <laughs> but probably not as funny as other people. Cause I'm also the disciplinarian in the family. My husband's super chill and like fun. And I'm, because of my anxiety, I'm on high alert all the time. And I'm constantly trying to keep the kids safe. And I'm like the fun police in a way. And so um, they don't think I'm as, as funny when I'm grounding them. It's the delicate dance that we have as a mom, <laughs> you know, to keep them safe and healthy. And then like, also be somewhat cool and be their friend on some level. Um, but you talk about anxiety and that, I mean, if we had a, I'll say a nickel for every time, instead of saying if we drank every time we did that. <laughs> Not That's okay. You can talk about drinking. Just Not appropriate. No um, we're going to get to that in a minute though. The whole like mommy wine culture thing. Um, but uh, anxiety is something we talk about because I don't know a mom that isn't anxious on some level, um, but you deal with anxiety in a more serious way. I mean, that's like a clinical situation for you. So how do you, how do you cope? Um, I, so I'm under a doctor's care and I go to therapy and I've learned a lot of techniques to help during those crazy times. Once I kind of recognized what it was, I was able to get help for it. And so I get really overstimulated really easily. If a bunch of people are trying to talk to me all at one time, or if I feel like I'm losing control of a situation, I feel like I'm going to snap. So before I knew about it, I would just snap. But now I can sense it coming and I remove myself from the situation and I do my breathing exercises or I play with silly putty or whatever I've got laying around and, and I diffuse before um, I get too far. And that helps. And also we try not to leave the house ever. So oh. that helps too. Well, then being in a pandemic is actually a good thing for you. Ideal. Yes. So I want to talk about the wine thing and mommy wine culture. This has been something that's been on my brain for a while. And since you have been in recovery and um, I don't know if, if alcohol was ever your thing or if it was more pills, but I know you don't drink now. Right. And um, I'm just seeing so much of this. I just feel like we're we're headed down a very dangerous path with all of the messaging that's out there now with t-shirts like it's wine time and mommy sippy cup i mean i see children in onesies that are like this is mommy's juice and this is my <laughs> juice and and listen i love my wine probably too much like a lot of moms right now um are we in a dangerous place right now with all this well i think only the individual could answer that um, there are people out there who destroy their life. And then there's people like me who take one sip and within a week of that, oh, she's frozen again. Oh no. Okay. Let's Did start over again? because I really like this question and I wanted to hear what you said. And I was just hearing bits and pieces, but I was saying, are we, 
are we heading a dangerous place with this mommy wine messaging and this mommy wine culture? I, I think that only the individual could answer that. There are some people who are able to drink responsibly and have their life not become completely unmanageable and more power to those people. There are people like me who have no on and off switch. And so once I start, I cannot stop. Um, and I destroy everything in my path. And so the biggest thing for me is ask yourself, you know, am I powerless over this? Is this my only coping mechanism? Do I feel like I need this to make it through the day? And if you answer yes to those questions, then maybe reevaluate. But I, I don't see anything wrong with somebody who can drink responsible and isn't letting it get in the way of their life. And they're not driving around with their kids and neglecting them. Yeah. Um, it's just everywhere. It's so crazy. I want to say hi to everyone in the chat right now. I've been neglecting them because I'm so yeah. excited and obsessed to talk with you. Um, so I want to say hi to everyone out in the chat. And if anyone has any questions for Tiffany, let us know. We're like rounding kind of the uh, the end here, which is crazy. It goes so, so fast. I have quick fire for you at the end, which I want to get to. Um, but let's have a few questions first. Uh, Samantha saying she loves the podcast. Charlene saying I loved the eyebrow thing. I <laughs> also loved the eyebrow thing. So I really do want to check in on your eyebrows. How are they? They Thank you for asking. They are great. I took the advice of many people in the comment section. And I actually got them tattooed on so I can't mess them up anymore. So tell everyone what you did during the beginning of this pandemic to yourself. I just, I shaved my brows right <laughs> off because I wanted to try to do tiger brows. And it seemed, you know, what, what is it? What even is hair? Do you even, what are eyebrows for? To catch sweat? I don't do that. I don't sweat or work out, so I don't even need them. So I just shaved them and I don't regret it. My husband didn't even notice when I went downstairs to show him, he's like, is your hair darker? What's, and I'm like, I literally have no eyebrows. How do you not see this? <laughs> I can't believe you did that. I mean, I remember watching that video and I was like, wow, I'm really not coping with this pandemic very well. But Tiffany seems to be having a more difficult time than I Yeah, <laughs> well, shaved her eyebrows off. <laughs> there, there was only like three hairs on each side to begin with. So it wasn't that big of a loss. Leanne is saying that was wicked funny. It was. Um, Let's talk about some of your other favorite videos. Do you have any favorites that you that you made down the line? I do. Uh, if my brain had a morning meeting, parts <sighs> one, two, three, four are my favorites because I almost didn't do the video because I thought for sure, okay, this is going to give people a really deep look inside my head. And once they see it, they're going to be like, this lady's crazy. Um, and I was shocked at how many people were like, me too. I think those same things. I was genuinely shocked. And so it made me feel better about myself and that inner dialogue. That is one of the videos that was sent to me on several occasions from many different women in my life. If you haven't seen this video, we'll post it after. But basically, you're in a morning meeting with anxiety. Who are some of the people in your morning meeting? Yeah. So the brain is orchestrating the meeting and there's anxiety, insomnia, depression, social anxiety, low self-esteem, um, a couple of inappropriate ones. And they're but all like in a meeting with each other, fighting each other. And it's just what a lot of our brains look like on any given day. Yes. <laughs> um, Angela has a question. Then we'll get to the um, the rapid fire. Angela is saying, will you explain to your children some of your earlier struggles? Yes, 100%. A, because it's all over the internet and I don't have a choice. But B, because I think it's really important that they know like that their mom was in this really dark spot and made it out the other side and thrived afterwards. So like whatever they're going through, they can know that this doesn't have to be the end, that there can be a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. And such a happy ending for everybody. All right. So I want to do a little rapid fire with you. So okay. I'll ask the questions and then just first thing that comes to your mind. It's not hard at all. Oh, look, at she's putting her hair in a pony <laughs> and she's like, I got this. Let's do it. Okay. Favorite book. Twilight. Favorite podcast, not your own. My favorite murder. Night owl or early bird? Early bird. Organized chaos or neat freak? Organized chaos. 
Sweet or salty? Sweet. Call or text? Neither. Oh, <laughs> if you say call, we're not friends anymore. Um, <laughs> what does it mean to have it all? To um, have it all. For, for me, it means to have my family with me and being happy and healthy. I love that. You are so awesome. Thank you. Traveling the Jenkins. So what's next for you? You have so much that I wanted to tell everyone about. You have a book. Um, if anyone's interested more in your backstory and addiction and everything that happened, they can check out your book. It's all there, right? Yes. High Achiever, the incredible true story of one addict's double life. Um, and I am, it's on Amazon and bookstores. I'm working on a second book right now, um, picking up where that one left off. And I also have a weekly parenting podcast that I do. What's the name of the podcast for everybody? It's called Take It or Leave It. I do it with Meredith Masony from That's Inappropriate. We've had her on the show. Oh, she really? Awesome. Yeah. How nice of her to make it on before me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We should get you both on sometime and we'll just have a big old mom to mom party. That'd be fun. I she love Meredith. So She's much fun. Best so you do that virtually? Mm -hmm. We were doing it in person and, and then the thing happened. And so now right. we're virtual. Yes. And then, of course, we can find you on Instagram. Yes. At Juggling the Jenkins and YouTube and Facebook. Yes. And, and anything else that we don't know about yet? Mugshots.com. You oh. can find me there. I'm just She's like, I don't know if I should laugh. I'm just kidding. Don't look I was like, is, that, is this a new platform? Do I need to join? No. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> All right, Tiffany, you are the best. Um, thank you so much for giving us so much of your time today. Paul says, Tiffany, you have a fabulous personality. Don't be so rough on yourself. Enjoy where you are. And that's Aww. coming from my uncle, who's oh, I love the him. best. Thanks, Uncle Paul. Yes, Uncle Paul. He watches every week. <laughs> I love him. When we first started watch, was first started the show, and I had like no viewers. I said, "You have to watch." And he's like, "I'm not a mom." I'm like, "Who cares?" And he's um, been here ever since. Ever since. <gasps> That's so nice. That's my village. Um, Tiffany, you're great. Thank you all, and thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'll let you go. I'll let you get back to your life and your three kids and everything else you've got going on. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you for having me. You're great. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you, everybody out there, and for your comments. If you aren't following Tiffany already, you have to. Um, I wish we could show you all of her funny videos. They're so great, but just go to her page, Juggling the Jenkins. Like I said, I've been following her forever and she's hilarious and you never know what's gonna happen next. Um, next week, we are gearing up for Halloween. So we thought we'd do something a little bit different. And so we're still working on it, but I think we're gonna do a little Halloween extravaganza. Maybe I'll be in a costume. Maybe we'll do some last minute costume ideas, some cocktails, some um, fun DIY projects. I don't know yet because we haven't planned it yet, but we're doing something Halloween-y next week, Wednesday at 4 p.m. right here on mom to mom So I hope to see you there. Also, I want to mention on Mondays, Chef's Pantry with Anna Rossi. Um, that is on the Hub Today's Facebook page at 4 p.m. on Monday. So please tune in for that. They're always cooking up something good. Lisa says, I love her. Oh, we love you too, Lisa. Thanks for always tuning in. Um, you guys are the best and we will see you next week here on Mom to Mom. Bye everyone.